So this is a carbon print I made on glass using my non-carbon transfer method where you just put the emulsion directly on the glass and expose through the other side. Um, I have been developing a recipe to make a more sepia-toned emulsion because um, it just seems like that looks better for for uh, well at least specifically for aura tones uh, it looks better for other things as well um, but I finally got the recipe where I wanted and not only that but I was experimenting with using a photo enlarger with a UV light source instead of a traditional um, printing out where you have the negative the size that you wanted so I shot the picture on this uh, crown graphic camera 4x5 and I enlarged it with my enlarger using my using my method for the, the carbon method that I have on uh, my YouTube channel and uh, I made an 8x10 of that so it's just transparent but then I put gold foil paper behind it to give it the oritone appearance um, I just thought that looked better so uh, I haven't put anything up in a while I've been extremely busy at work I know I've said that a hundred times <laughs> um, but I was planning on making a bunch of videos experimenting with building your own cameras but there's actually been quite a few people doing that um, I think I covered all the topics that I wanted to I may revisit uh, shutters but other than that I think everyone else has kind of covered everything. Um, if I find a subject that I can't find any videos or information on, then I'll make a video of it. Um, I've been investing in some more filming equipment so I can do, well, do a lot more stuff. I wanted to play around with some um, cinematic videos and things like that of nature. But um, as far as my photography goes, as far as the analog photography goes, I'm sticking with not not completely 4x5, but I like it so much I'm going to do mostly 4x5. Um, and uh, I want to show other people how to do it as well. I'm trying to get uh, some stuff around here where I can have like workshops or something uh, in the future. Um, the other thing I need to do a video of after this is how I shoot and develop ortho litho film um i use the uh i think it's arista ortho litho 3.0 it's it's very cheap 50 sheets or 100 sheets but i can't remember which are like 20 dollars so it's extremely inexpensive um it's just very slow and it's orthochromatic but there are some ways i've been i've been developing some ways to work around those problems um, and so I think I need to make a video of that because that would be helpful to people, you know, even if you manage to get yourself a, a large format camera together, the film can be prohibitively expensive. So this is a cheap way to um, shoot large format or almost any format. You can cut it up and stick it in anything. Um, I think it looks better personally it gives me the look I want it's such a fine grain that it's I mean it, the detail is just insane on it so I, I it's just my favorite thing and I guess I need to kind of show how that process flows because I can't I found some very vague information on it so I need to find so I need to make some content showing people how to do it um, but uh, that's what I have planned in the future, and uh, next segment I'm going to show how I converted my enlarger to uh, ultraviolet to do this project right here. So this is my enlarger setup. Um, I got this at a flea market for a hundred bucks, which is a steal, um, and I didn't know 100% what it was, but it did have all of the 35 millimeter components. Later on, I purchased lenses off of eBay to be able to do uh, 4x5, 6x6, and even 6x7 negatives. But it'll do up to 4x5, which was the important 
component of this. Um, and it works good, but I wanted to see if I could do the same thing with it that I did with the um, 35 millimeter projectors for the cyanotypes. And it does work, but it works best with larger negatives. If you're going to do 35 millimeter film, it's best to just stick with the projector because the um, the condenser lenses are optimized. Uh, in this, the condenser lens is more optimized for the 4x5, but it doesn't have any effect when you're talking about... I mean, it, it, there's nothing really different to notice when you're doing regular enlargements, silver gelatin enlargements, but if you're doing ultraviolet, then it definitely has an issue. But uh, I'll show you what I did to adapt it. Um, really, it's just a changing out the the head with a UV bulb, but it's kind of sloppy because I had to get everything just, you know, tuned in just right, but uh, I'll show you how the head was assembled. This is the ultraviolet light source, and all it is is a 100 watt, 380 nanometer LED on a heat sink, so I have a separate power supply for the fan, plus this is a... Um, continuous current driver to make sure that it's always at its optimum power. Those are those are really good to have. Unless you want to dim the bulb, then they're not the best. Um, this is just a piece of HVAC piping that I use to uh, space it properly. But uh, And this is just cardboard, so it's got a 60 degree lens on it. Um, and it's just, I just have it on this cardboard to hold it on top of this collar. And that's all there is to that. This is just, this was just happened to be the perfect size for this particular enlarger to hold it at the right level to get the light focused. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm just swapping out the regular light source with the UV. And I have to take off this whole collar so that just has the the bulb in it on the head and then if I can get the camera up here that's just the top of the condenser lens assembly so let me try to get this back here all right so this whole assembly just sits on top of it like so and I have to kind of adjust it in this is kind of a mess. I have to I have to make a better bracketing system. I want to make it to where I can swap these out fairly quickly. Um, so it's easier to deal with. But um, you just set it on top of this collar. And I go ahead and plug the fan in on top so it doesn't overheat when I turn it on. And then I'll show you how I have to adjust it. So basically when I turn it on down here, I have a target on the bottom and I'm trying to get any aberrations as smooth as possible. So I'll be moving this around. That's what you'll see me doing next. So I'm using a fluorescent target. It's just a piece of, um, oh, it's watercolor paper I painted with UV paint. So you can see the difference. Like this is just on the, base of the enlarger and then I can put this on you can see it better um, so let me try to turn the ISO down so you can see what I'm talking about here uh, there we go um, I'm trying to get all of this as smooth as possible so what you see here see the you want the center as bright as possible, like that. Because you can have it like that, and then you're going to have dark spots in your enlargement here. So you want to center the whole thing and get it as perfect as possible. It's not possible to get it 100%, but that's about where you want it right there. And then I'll go ahead and stick a negative in it. And this is a 4x5 negative so that we can see what we're going to look like here. Let me turn the ISO up. 
all right so this also allows you to focus it to get the focus just right on it so without this target it's kind of hard to see so you can still you can adjust your aperture and all that but if you don't have this target then you have almost nothing you can see to adjust with so that's all there really is to converting this um, this again this is a 4x5 negative and it makes beautifully detailed images I mean I can't I got into that and I just couldn't believe how detailed they were um, the other ones that you can do on it um, of course if you have the right and larger this one I purchased a regular medium format 6x6 and uh, one of the cameras I have has a film back for a 6x7 and there's a person on eBay that 3D prints these film holders so that's cool because I couldn't find one anywhere else but I guess the point I'm trying to make here is if you do anything from medium format to large format or 4x5 is as big as this will go anyway you're good but if you try to do 35 the condenser head just you, you would think it would be better because you're doing a hundred watts whereas the um, 35 millimeter projector is only doing a 10 watt but it has to do it has to do something with the condenser being optimized now you can still do cyanotypes on this and they're very detailed they're far more detailed well especially if you're using a 4x5 or yeah 4x5 negative but um, I don't know there's something artistically better about doing them with a projector at least in my mind it's whatever you want that's why I'm showing you this so you can do pretty much whatever you want to do with it um, and the picture I'm going to have in the description um, it was a carbon print that I did my no transfer carbon type um, all you do is make the plate and then you um, put it on the enlarger what I do is I put a piece of black paper down so that nothing will reflect through it and then on the glass you use you coat one side with your emulsion and let it dry thoroughly when it's done drying I'll clean one, this, the other side with like Windex on the paper towel to make sure it's completely clear and then I'll make sure it's here now it takes about uh, 20 minutes of exposure for that type of print on here for an 8 by 10 anyway but it is possible this was a test plate I did with a 35 millimeter negative and I just wasn't happy with it uh, it just there wasn't a lot of detail in it um, it tried but it just wasn't I wasn't happy with the final result um, and uh, then I just made the uh, the final print into oratone by putting foil gold foil on the back of it but that's all I really have for this I've tried several different things on it um, you have to use the 380 nanometer LED otherwise it'll melt the negative and 100 watt is about the maximum power you can output on this or again you'll melt the negative <laughs> but uh, that's all there is to get to this conversion um, later on I'm going to do some videos on carbon enlarging showing exactly what I did because I have a special recipe I developed for um, Oratone because Oratone you want a more sepia color not just black and that took me a while to get the recipe right for that um, I'm also going to do a video on um, How I use ortho litho film because that's what I've been shooting in the 4x5. It's extremely cheap That's what this negative here is is ortho litho film and I'm going to show the process for shooting and developing that film because that just seems to be really good i was planning on doing a lot of films on or, or movies about um homemade cameras but there's been a lot of that stuff already done 
I already put the stuff I kind of had that was different out there so I'm going to focus more on the process of how I'm making my prints um, any kind of conversions I have like this and uh, just in that kind of stuff in general so I uh, hope to see you again soon and that's all I have for this one